Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hi, Stephen. This is Clem Fandango. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Clem Fandango. Yeah, but uh, you're not coming through my headphones. Hang on. Let me fix my... Uh... <laughs> you're coming through my computer. Let me fix my... Uh... Oh, I'm in your computer, Jeff. <laughs> Don't unplug I'll... me, you bastard. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now you're in my ears. Hey, I'm in your ear holes. They're in my ear holes. All right. There we go. That's better. How's it going, man? It is uh, kind of kooky, kind of coconuts. Yeah. Kind today. of a crazy it's, day. It's kind of <laughs> it's weird to be recording right now after all the crazy yeah. stuff happened today. Man, it was a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, just like in a glass. What does he say? A glass cage of emotions or something? Oh, I'm in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is what January sixth, twenty twenty one, and. I don't know. What are, what are they going to refer to today as? You know, we, we have to name it. Is it like the, the capital assault? What do you even call this? Hmm. Hmm. Um, we name things all the time. Let's just name it. <laughs> the capital, capital assault. stupidity. Uh, assault on precinct, uh, Washington, DC. Um, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, crazy. Cause in the morning, uh, I was all elated because Warnock and Ossoff won, giving mm-hmm. giving the the D's control of the the chamber. But yeah. uh, then things quickly devolved. And a, and a bunch of D's had to break in the Capitol. Yeah, a bunch of yeah, <laughs> actual bunch Nazis, D heads. Yeah, <laughs> nah, Nazis. I hate these guys. Nazis, Nazis. I hate these guys. Nazis. Oh. Well. uh... I see you made notes. Good job. Congrats. Yeah, I couldn't help it. I was thinking about last <laughs> night, and I was like, man, I have to take notes. Like, it's bothering me. I don't have my notes. And so I did I, some notes. It only took me until episode 104 <laughs> to, for me to make notes. I don't believe it. I made notes, but I didn't share them with you. They're handwritten on a piece of paper. Oh, my gosh. They're right here. There yeah, they I think that's how a lot of – podcasters do it somehow i don't know how they pull that off but good for them yeah i um i also have this oh i have this as well you mm. can't hear because my ice is melted no oh. <laughs> this is this is uh some jack with jack daniels with, uh, some canada dry oh, some jack ale. jack daniels jack mac 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 Oh, you got ginger ale too. Nice. Oh, you have ginger ale too? I do. I have uh, Jameson and ginger ale, my go to. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I had to do the Jack because, you know, Flask of Jack. With Flask of Jack. Jack Daniels. Mac. 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 Oh, man. Oh. Well, uh, we Last got one. So, yeah. I know. So, do you want to kind of, we should, uh, well, we'll just kind of do our normal <laughs> beginning stuff. But then, uh, kind of go through we'll go through the um the credits like each person that pops up mm-hmm. and i just made a couple notes about each person like kind of my favorite maybe my favorite line or favorite scene with them hmm. i kinda... did not for the first time i didn't i, didn't, I, I kind of focused more on the credits i didn't necessarily focus on these people so yeah it'd be good to hear yeah. your perspective and uh you are knowledgeable enough you could just chime in off <laughs> yeah i think we've watched this movie yeah. enough i think i can remember some of the things we talked about with mac <laughs> I did. and Dylan. i did go back because i wanted to figure out like back. of back. of all these guys like what was my favorite death and so i did go back and watch um each person die Ooh. Uh, yeah so uh i i chose my favorite i'll, I'll reveal on pod uh, on um, pod. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call a teaser in the radio biz. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and then I also made a list uh, for um, Predator versus blank. And then you have to oh. decide who would win. <laughs> That's good because that would bring me to some of the discussion points yeah. in the Palapa. It seemed to be quite popular in the Palapa. <laughs> so. Quite controversial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Regular hashtag bean dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought we were going to be talking about Bean Dad today, like <laughs> as our little run up to the episode. But no, like something else had to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's like whatever happened before the OJ thing. Like nobody remembers that. 
I know. I know you t- said that in that text. That was true. I looked it up. And, it was- uh, bean, bean Dad's a little too close to home. I don't know if I want to mm-hmm. get into it. I don't know. Yeah, I won't get into it. But, I mean, just you and me talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Adam was like, you know about ending a show. You should give me some advice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, we put a cap on our shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had limited series. That's, that's how you do it right. Well, um, I think I'm good. If you want to. All right. Sounds like you're flipping through notes. I love yeah, that sound. I'm, I'm just going to do this all, all episodes. What is that noise? You're like the kid who turns an assignment in on time. Like, look at this, Mr. Glover. <laughs> no. Is it time to turn in the assignment yet? Because I have it right here. <laughs> slow down slow it down well i filled up my glass with whiskey and ice and ginger ale and i brought the bottle with me so oh i'll I'll be refilling probably i just bought the airplane shot of it and then an airplane shot of the jack daniels tennessee fire Mm, oh we're gonna get spicy Cinnamony. Spicy cinnamony whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Cool, man. Well, I'll just dive right into it and right, we'll just kind of circle around, talk about everything and then anything. Let's do it. <clears throat> Welcome to Predator Minute, the podcast where we break down the 1987 action sci-fi classic Predator, one final minute at a time. I'm John Zabriskie. And I am Jeff Glover. And today we're talking about, just like I hinted at a second ago, the really the end of Predator. Uh, we're technically calling this minutes 104 through 107, the movie Runtime is an hour and 46 and a half minutes, I believe. Yeah, this will be the only episode that uh, covers more than one minute of the movie. Look at us. Yeah, yeah, and that cuts off also before the end of like a full minute as well. So this is true. We're covering last three and a half. For any of those listeners out there, don't worry. The end is near. Your time is up. (laughs) We've tortured you long enough. (laughs) <laughs> this is it this is final episode of predator minute and um i uh i'm excited to be here with you john hey I whiskey yeah yeah i finally have my flask of jack with mac right now jack jack mac mac, mac. 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 <laughs> yeah so yeah let's we'll just we'll dive into it just like we usually do and then i'm sure we have all sorts of little tangentials we can partake in yeah let's do it so yeah, we're uh, gonna oh i guess yeah just obviously we're gonna be skipping like the minute like the number talk and like the year talk because we're covering a range of minutes four five six seven that's four different minutes so uh we're not gonna really do the whole review some years sorry about that yeah we got uh, some uh john was ambitious and made notes about all sorts of stuff here so uh <laughs> We'll talk about that. I, um, for the first time in 103 minutes, I also made some notes. So I got them here on my piece of paper. <laughs> so we'll uh, cover some of those. And, um, yeah, so join us for this little ride to the end of the film. Let's do it. So you want to, um, well, I'll say what we start and end on, and then you can start taking us to the first part if that sounds good to you. Do it. Do it. Okay. Minute 104 opens with someone reading a Sergeant Rock comic book, and Minute 107 ends with the last of the credits exiting the top of the screen. Mm. Fade to black. Fade to black. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Um, The first and final part of the movie, uh, before we get to just scrolling names, is uh, the first 43 seconds of this minute we carry over from last minute we continue to see the live credits of someone holding a sergeant rock comic book it's hawkins Hmm. he smiles and laughs at the camera as his name and actor are shown we cut to billy dramatically turning to the camera and then giving a great big laugh as his name and actor are shown cut to blaine Blaine. evacuating a huge tobacco spit while holding old painless then smiling at the camera as his name and actor are displayed. Cut to Mac! 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 
Mac. Unscrewing the top of a flask. Mac. Flask. Mac. Offering it to the camera. That's to us. And then <laughs> taking a swig as his name and actor are shown. Cut to Anna Anna raising her head to face the camera and smile as her name and actress are shown. Then cut to Dylan! 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 Catching an MP5 submachine gun, of course, and then smiling at the camera. Cut to Dutch as he, uh, Billy-like, dramatically turns his face to the right of the camera and the screen freezes with his face like that as his name and actor are shown. Still on the frozen screen, the credits roll up for the following characters in this order. Dutch. Dylan. 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 Anna Anna. Mac. 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 Blaine. Blaine. Billy. Pacho. <laughs> General Phillips. And Hawkins. And we fade to black. Whew. Mm. Yeah, the end of our on-camera part of the movie after this is just credits rolling against the black screen but before then yeah what what are, what are uh, some things that stand out to you what do you want to talk about here well i i think we should maybe come, we can kind of go through each of our characters here and and talk about their little last hurrahs cuz I, I i i do love the this credit sequence we kind of talked about this last time um this this immense tone shift the end of predator is such kind of a serious downer uh end i mean dutch lives and kills the predator or the predator kills himself and that's that's fine but the you know the end of the movie is kind of like whew, wow everybody's dead except for this one guy who gets out of the jungle uh and but then we get this kind of amazing jump where we get to see all the characters smiling at the camera one more time <laughs> uh it's reminiscent of like a stage play when all the actors come out and bow um and uh we talked a lot last minute about how we like the tone of the ending of the movie. We like how serious it is. Uh, but then I have to admit at, when it flips to this, I love this too, because this, yes. movie, this movie is a blast and it's fun. And uh, I really enjoy that the filmmakers and the director sort of acknowledge that here. I don't know. What do you think, John? Oh man, it is so, it is so reminiscent to me of like sitcom beginnings. I, I think of Family Matters yes. for some reason as like the standard bear, like at the beginning of the episode, it's right, them jumping around and it's like, there's Jaleel White. And <laughs> Jaleel White's the last one, of course, because he's like, and starring Jaleel White, but it's like Reginald Del Johnson. And then Reginald Del Johnson holds his flask out to the camera. And <laughs> Right, Jaleel White turns dramatically towards just to the right of the camera, doesn't even smile. Who's the little girl catches a sub sub machine gun? <laughs> right, right. The, the older son does something. He, I don't know. He's right. holding a sub uh, giant minigun. <laughs> uh, but you, you Spits talk about <laughs> this big tobacco tobacco. Um, I should have moved this commentary up because this is by far. The most he's talked. Of course, it's like three and a half minutes, but there have been long stretches of the movie where McTiernan is not saying much. Um, mm -hmm. And everything he's saying is really relating to uh, the credits here. These uh, roll, rolling, not rolling, uh, to the uh, kind of like uh, sitcom -y or old school style. He calls it a 1950s style curtain call. Mm. Um, and just like you're saying, he's saying because of the downer ending, he wanted to let the audience see the guys one more time. He references the Dirty Dozen. And as soon as I looked at the Dirty Dozen end credits, it is very reminiscent of Predator. I don't know if you saw the side by side picture I put down there. I did. Yeah. yeah that was interesting. Yeah. I, I've, I've actually never seen the Dirty Dozen. I know movie shame, but, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, super interesting. I, I love that he just yeah. put up one of his favorite films. That's great. Well, it's, it's kind of, so yeah, there's that and there's another reference he made, but looking at the Dirty Dozen end credits, something they did interestingly as the credits were rolling up, you have the names of the characters on the left and, you know, normal upper and then lowercase letters, and then the actors' names on the right, all in caps. Mm. Predator does the same thing with its, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, characters you just read off, uh, when summarizing this first part of the minute, uh, the difference is they're not doing like a, like a whole screen. Let's look at the, ca the character. They're actually showing kind of like a, like a ghost head on the right of the credits. Like as they call each, uh, soldier's name, like the soldier, oh. like looks up at the camera. Jefferson, RT. 
Um, I think they look at the camera. I don't remember. It's been a whole day since I looked at this and a lot of stuff has happened, but um, <laughs> I think they're calling the names of the different characters in the actual dirty dozen. They're looking up at the camera and John McTiernan uh, claims to have stolen that from that or that style from dirty dozen. But he also calls, he also talks about a movie called Brewster McCloud, which I don't know. I took a look at the end credits of that. And that is a bizarre movie. I don't know if you know Brewster McCloud. It's a Robert Altman movie. Oh, really? I've no, I do. I'm not familiar at all. I never heard of it. Yeah. I think it's about this guy who wants to fly. And in the end, he finally makes this flying costume and he's flying around like this big top tent or arena. (laughs) And he's just losing it. He's like screaming. It is so bizarre. And then like, I think he runs out of energy after a minute or so and then just crashes to the ground from, you know, 100, 200 feet in the air and just, lays there like in his whole bird outfit just like crumpled on the ground then a ringmaster comes on like onto the arena floor and starts like telling everybody like here are all the characters in the movie as the guy is still laying there and like this whole like marching band or parade just kind of walks by partly over this guy laying on the ground it is it is bizarre i don't know I didn't wow. see any reference other than uh, being told the names of the characters, but that was the only similarity I saw to Brewster McCloud. The greatest show on earth proudly presents the cast of Brewster McCloud. Maybe that wow. just stuck in McTernan's head, The that, you know, just that part of it that they would show each character or something. That is, that sounds very strange. There's someone out there that's like a massive Brewster McCloud fan that's like, fuck you guys. It Bruce is. Brewster McCloud is awesome. So bizarre. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll finish up my commentary here and then we'll uh, move on more to our individual characters. He thought sure. that copying the Dirty Dozen where the faces look at the screen, like the soldier faces, was way too fascist, he even he said. He said way too militaristic. Hmm. Um, so we're having like a little bit of an insight into his politics, uh, McTiernan's beliefs here, that um, it's something I was saying pretty much all movie long, that this is kind of a send up of these eighties action military movies um, right. in a way it's really stripping them of their power. Uh, sometimes their skin and definitely their weapons and their machismo. And he's really backing that up here without saying as much, but he did really like having the crew look at the camera and smile and kind of, they're kind of goofing around Um the last thing he ends up saying, he says something like the last couple of things he says, uh, it would be nice to have done the early stuff the same way as the later stuff, meaning he really liked what they did in the second half, like after the camp hmm. uh, massacre. Um, he, he said, though, without that camp massacre stuff and like kind of uh, the first part of the movie as it was, um, they couldn't have made the second part of the movie uh, because the studio was really sold on the things they were sending them from the first part of the movie. That's so interesting that I bet that happens a lot. Maybe, maybe more in, in old, older Hollywood where when you're, you know, when you're sending like actual film dailies back to the studio Mm -hmm. where you, it it sounds, and it sounds too like they, the, because you say it that way, it sounds like they were somewhat filming this chronologically. Yes. And uh, yeah. And I, I'm, as I say that, I remember we talked about that before, but um that is a. I wonder how many directors have had to take that into account, where they need to film their movie in a certain way, so that when they send the dailies back, it, they get an okay to finish it and then kind of finish it the way they want to. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting idea, but uh, well, good for McTiernan for getting the job done. Yeah, yeah, just giving him credit here at the end. Uh, I thought he did a great job of setting mood of setting themes like the claustrophobia feel like the powerlessness of the team really uh, increasing as the movie goes on. We hit nothing. Um, Our really need to see the predator. Like I know throughout the movie, just watching it even uh, for the 50th time or whatever, I still am just like really anxious to see the predator and all those things are, a credit to the director and us, of course, like in the characters uh, mm-hmm. that we're seeing here in the, uh, that the little uh, face the camera moments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I was thinking we could just kind of like uh, go through each character here real quick and, and, and talk about them briefly. What mm-hmm. do you think? 
I agree. And we have to start with, of course, uh, Ponchito, who's mug showed up last minute and we yeah and we kind of skipped over that because we were like well we'll talk about him when we get to the credit sequence so yeah we should start with poncho so we're going to cheat a little bit that was at the end of last minute played of course by the uh the great richard chavez Mm -hmm. who is himself a vietnam vet correct yes yes uh richard chavez a uh, Vietnam vet, one of two Viet- Vietnam vets here in the cast. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we get Richard Chavez here and, uh, I just made a couple notes about each character and kind of my favorite thing about them or maybe a favorite line or favorite scene. Um, and, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, but, uh, I think my favorite line from Poncho is the, uh, the we hit nothing. We hit nothing. Mm, we hit nothing. We hit nothing. I think it's just such a, it's such a exclamation point in the movie, right? That scene where they fire all their weapons into the jungle and they hit nothing and they still can't see the predator. And after all the weapons die down and it's super quiet, we get Poncho just laying down the truth that we hit fucking nothing. We hit nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I just love uh, his sort of no nonsense ness in that scene, and I think it's a good representation of his character. That's my favorite uh, Poncho moment. Do you have a, a favorite Poncho moment, or just uh, something about him that you like? Oh, I do. I just, I mean, overall, I really like his vulnerability. Um, he's basically like us in the jungle. Like, even though he's the Vietnam vet in the crew, they do what paint his character to be. Uh, I would say pretty sensitive to all the dangers going on and the risks that are involved in what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 a lot of times is like, they skin them. Why would they skin them? Like we'd be asking the same thing. He's like, later on, he's like a lot of good, to, a chopper is going to do, do us. Like we'd be thinking, thinking a lot of the same thing. And he really shows the fear out of all the crew. I think he shows the, the fear the most, what it would be like to be, you know, hunted by an unseen adversary, something beyond the team's capabilities. Like he's showing that fear. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't know, just rewatching parts of the movie. I've only rewatched like the first 20 minutes or so. I was just kind of, I don't know. I wanted to look over the minutes again. I didn't make it too far though, unfortunately. Uh, but towards the beginning, after they find the downed chopper, uh, he and Dutch are together making their way through the jungle. Uh, and they're, talking about uh, what they're doing. And then he says something along the lines of, you remember Afghanistan? And Dutch <laughs> tells him, trying to forget it. Come on. What's he got? Same business. Gorilla saw like two guys in the chopper, followed by men with American equipment. Do you remember Afghanistan? I'm trying to forget it. Come on. <laughs> you know, and like pats him on the back. And I, I thought I, I really like that moment because it's like relational. It it tells you a lot about he and Dutch's relationship without having to say a lot. Like they're, they're showing it. Uh, they show Dutch to be kind of like joking with them. Like when he's talking to him, then as soon as, you know, he also being a leader. Them, yes. Also being that leader, like calm yeah. him down. But at the same time, Dutch has a very worried look, serious look on his face after the end, that conversation and, and Pancho Panchito walks ahead so yeah, I like I like the I like the little noodle a, incident. Yeah, you make a really good point that Poncho does kind of play the role of the audience here. Like we as the audience really do um connect with what he's saying. Like his perspective on all these scenes is sort of like the straight man, kind of the guy off to the side being like, What the fuck is going on here, guy? <laughs> <laughs> like we didn't hit yeah. anything. <laughs> you know? Like and, and he does, he plays that role throughout the whole um kind of chase sequence through the jungle. Um, that's a really good point. I, I like that. Uh, he's a very, very much uh, a very even tempered measured uh, character, it's kind of straight man that, that really sort of gives, gives us that, that audience's perspective throughout the, the story. So I think that's cool. Yeah. I also really like that he gets hit by that fucking log and doesn't die. <laughs> Like, like that should have killed him, but he was just like, Ugh. and then lives, and then later just gets shot in the head by the by the predator, and then that's his that's his death. 
<laughs> yeah, no, no mercy there. That's like yeah. putting down the wounded animal to the predator. But yeah, he's 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 definitely suffering the longest. Even though Dylan, 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 Dylan. later on, um, wait after yeah after the log incident uh, has his arm blown off, it's pretty close to his demise. It's, there's only a few seconds that pass before the predator skewers him, makes him yeah, whatever. It's a Dylan kebab, <laughs> kebab. All right, so uh, so we get so Hawkins was last minute. So really, at the beginning of this minute, we get Hawkins. He's looking at his Sergeant Rock comic, looks up, and we get a nice grin and laugh, and he messes with his hat there a little bit. So of course, this is uh, the great Shane Black, uh, famed screenwriter and uh, a small uh, partial actor, um, mm-hmm. who's playing Hawkins here, and uh, I. Uh, I, with with Hawkins, I don't know if I have a specific favorite line. I just really like his uh, that he's the comic relief. I like that his I like his jokes as stupid mm-hmm. as they are. I just I like that through line in the movie. I like that that's sort of his thing where he's trying to make Billy laugh the whole time. Billy, and, uh, Billy, Billy, and uh, yeah. So I didn't have a specific favorite line by him, but I just sort of uh, I like the. The through line of the jokes, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. The other day, I was going down to my girlfriend. I said to her, Jace, you got a big pussy. Jace, you got a big pussy. She said, why did you say that twice? And I said, I didn't. See, it's because of the echo. Where the... <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And, he, and he's the rookie. He's like the, right. what do we say, the, the, the sacrificial lamb, I called I called him back in the day, yeah, uh, just because he's connected like to the bushes. Yes, Ugh. slaughtered. Um, but I think my favorite part is him actually doing his job as the communications guy, like when he's telling Dutch, oh, "Yeah, setting they, up the little radio." Yeah, setting up the little radio. Like they need to get out of here before uh, stuff goes down. Major, major, we stepped into some real shit here. They see him, they in. Air surveillance says we got gorillas all over the place. Can't be more than one, two miles away. This place going down. How much time? Half an hour, maybe less. Um, but it, it, it's nice to see like a professional in their element, even though I think that's the only time he really does that. Otherwise, he's just kind of hanging back and letting other people act, take action. Yeah. Well, other than Arnold's one-liners, you know, the only other comic relief in the movie comes from Hawkins. Yeah. And after he dies, we don't really ever get a joke again. So Mm-mm. we got to give it to Hawkins for bringing a little bit of the funny. Yeah. Like his death is telling you like, okay, no more fun. This yeah. Is right. Funny. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We talked about that when he died. It was like, there, that's the end of an era. 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 Oh, let, let me mention real quick. I, I don't know why I don't have this in my notes. I could have sworn I had this in my notes at one point. Like early on, like in the chopper, he's also reading a Sergeant Rock comic book. That is because um, during production or even before production, there were talks that they wanted to adapt Sergeant Rock comic book, the Sergeant Rock comic book series into a right. movie with Arnold playing Sergeant Rock yeah. and leading a ragtag team of soldiers on different Mission. Come on, I'm Sergeant Rock. <laughs> Sergeant Rock. No. All American, Sergeant Rock. Sergeant Rock. <laughs> I'm on the cover. <laughs> uh, I'm the <laughs> make it about me. <laughs> I'm a rock. Just do it. Just do make it. it. Just do it now. Do me now. Do me now. <laughs> uh, but I remember discovering that little uh, factoid early on. And I, I'm sure I discussed it somewhere in the chopper ride, but I just I can't find it. But, yeah, it was neat to did. see that there's other things up in the air. And I wonder if Shane Black was going to write it. I don't know. Maybe that's a character choice of him hmm. picking up the comic book, if that's him. or the, Yeah, because that's not in the script. I don't think it says 
holds a Sergeant Rock comic book. Arnold's too old now. Who would be Sergeant Rock now? Hmm. Could it, it be, be the Rock? The, I was just going <laughs> to say, would it be Dwayne the Rock Johnson? <laughs> Sergeant Rock starring the Rock? Is that too on the nose? <laughs> oh, man. I think, I think it has to be, though. Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, R.I.P. Hawkins. So then we uh, move on and we get the little swing around from Billy here. We get a shot of his back, and then he turns around, looking all serious, but then we get a nice big old Billy laugh. Ah, just play him. Mm-hmm. Sonny Landham. So uh, that is uh, – that's honest. That's my favorite uh, moment from Billy in the movie is when he does finally crack. When mm-hmm. Hawkins crack. Finally, finally crack, finally gets him with the joke because uh, he plays it so well. He just sort of digests the joke, sits there, looks all serious, and if you – never seen the movie before you think he's just going to turn around and walk away like he has every other time but then he gives that really big belly laugh <laughs> and uh, I, i've always really liked that so i i think that's my favorite moment for me from billy um i don't know what do you think um i'm kind of wondering why is he like what they say to make him look like that laughing <laughs> on the credits right <laughs> what they do right here to make him laugh right <laughs> Maybe they told him that he didn't need bodyguards. <laughs> Maybe they told him what was really in that vine he was drinking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well done. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Uh, I think my favorite moment for Billy is way early on when he first senses the predator. But he, this, I would say the second time he senses the predator. The first time he senses the predator is when they're escaping, not escaping, when they're leaving the burned out gorilla camp that they exploded. Uh, Adam was on that episode, Adam Pranica. Mm. Um, it's, he's laughing and then like the predator picks him up or picks up his laughter and is like modulating it in predator vision. But then Billy clearly senses something and kind of walks to follow the other team kind of in a hurried way. Uh, but my, I think my favorite moment is the second time he actually senses the predator. We just standing there staring off into jungular space and Max says there's something about his nose. There's like that, that damn nose of his from like that. And what's got Billy so spooked? What's got Billy so spooked? <laughs> That's right. That was, that was your line. Uh, and then him saying, what's I guess it's nothing really major. Spooked? What's got Billy so spooked? <laughs> what's got Billy so spooked? <laughs> what's got Billy so spooked? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, we have our own little little quote worthy lines here. What got Billy so spooked? <laughs> uh, but when he says, "I guess it's nothing major," that's I, I talked about that at the time. But that was a line that I guess it's nothing major. Brother of the show and former host of the show, Aaron uh, and I would repeat back to each other like all the time. I guess it's nothing major. Growing up, it wasn't just. Mm. Uh, anything predator related, but we just say, I guess it's nothing major or I guess it's nothing major. Right. I guess it's nothing major. I guess it's nothing major. Um, and, <laughs> and we really like the double meaning of that line, but we also, uh, we, but I also really like the fact that Billy clearly senses the predator is there. And I think it's that moment that he is sensing they're all doomed. We're doomed. Also he doesn't, notable. Doesn't say it. We're all going to die. Right. Also notable. I don't know what the, um, if you can infer anything from this uh, deeper, but he's the only character that gets killed off screen from our main jungle team, right? I mean, Dylan is, well, I guess Dylan's killed mostly on screen. Yeah, yeah we see Dylan. I mean, Dylan's arm yeah. is ripped off and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lifted in the air by a. But like everybody person. else, we can say how they were killed by the predator. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can't say that with Billy, right? All we know is he took his shirt off and stood on that log, and we assume that was the end of it. Right. But, um, yeah, he was. Uh, he's the only one where we didn't really get to know, which I think is a little interesting. Yeah, there, there is that fan comic that was released not that long ago, showing Billy taking on the predator, maybe having a couple swipes at him, but ultimately the predator chicken out, chickens out, and stabs him from the back. Back as as they do, as they do. What a yeah, yeah. cowardly way. All right, all right. So after Billy, we move on and we get Blaine. Blaine. And Blaine. I ain't got time to bleed. 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 I ain't got time to chew up this tobacco. I'm just going to spit that shit out. He's holding his minigun upwards and uh, spits a big old wad of chew onto the ground and then looks at the camera and 
gives a little closed mouth smile. Hmm. <laughs> Blaine. Um, Blaine. The note I made for Blaine, of course, Blaine. Jesse Ventura here, is uh, in for me. He's got my favorite death. Oh yeah, I uh, I I love a, a good gory death in a in a horror movie or in an action movie. It always makes me sit up in my chair and I kind of go ooh. And uh, every time I see his death, I kind of sit up and go ooh, because um, that hole that the predator explodes through his back and then out through his chest, and the blood explodes like. I think I described it as like blood packets in a leaf blower. Like it just, mm. <laughs> just <laughs> blows out is uh, one of the great action movie deaths of all time. And I think, uh, I think for my list, I think it's at the top. I think it's my favorite death in this movie. So uh, here's to you, Blaine and your exploding MTV t-shirt death. Cheers. Cheers. I, I think Blaine is one of the, best used characters and Jesse's one of the best used actors in this movie mm-hmm. with how McTiernan uses him as this basically a blunt force object as uh like the spear of the team, the heavy duty gunner of the team, just yeah, number one with the minigun uh of the team, um wiping out foes, you know, with his machine gun hose. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, McTiernan, I think, uses him so well in the movie because he's, like, concentrated. It's like you remember everything that Blaine does. You remember his quotes about, you know, being a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus just like me. A bunch of slap jaw <laughs> around here. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus just like me. Yeah, Spread this on your sore ass, Blaine. <laughs> Um, you remember him firing the minigun at some hapless gorillas. Uh, you remember his death. You, yeah, you might remember um, him sharing a flask of Jack with Mac. Mac! Mac! His good buddy. Uh, so I think he's used just so, so well, which makes it harder for me to actually choose uh, his, best, his best line, I think, or his best moment. Uh, to me, it's probably him opening fire in the gorilla camp with the minigun where he Mm. kicks down like one of the palapa doors and is just (laughs) firing, (laughs) firing thousands of rounds into (laughs) fleeing fleeing gorillas. Like clearly they're trying to leave. (laughs) Like, Oh my God, (laughs) what have we done? Uh, (laughs) done? Hey, caramba. (laughs) Like throwing a rock at a bee's nest. You're like, Oh my God. No, they're dead like five times each. Easy. He just, (laughs) Does not let up. So that's that's one of my favorite moments. If I had to pick a quote, it'd be the this stuff will make you goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just yeah, like I me. wrote that down too. That's also notable for me because uh, the first time I ever came on the show was mm-hmm. the minute before that, and then the minute where he says the sexual tyrannosaurus line. So uh, that was kind of the beginnings uh, for me and uh, Predator Minute. So. Thanks, Jesse Ventura. I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah, like timeline-wise, I have it in front of me. Yeah, you were on episode eight, one-way ticket, and then number nine, sexual Tyrannosaurus. Mm. And then Aaron was gone uh, for, I think, one of those? I can't remember both of those. No, just one of those he was gone for. And then, like, the next few episodes, I didn't have a co-host. I was just having guests on. I'm like, what do I do for a co-host? And they're like... Somehow, some way, I, I convinced you. I was looking for the texts or the emails <laughs> or anything like that that like showed because I've kept our email chain going for or our text chain going for, like forever. And when I was looking yeah. through the I emails, think it, I couldn't I find. I think it. it was over text. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but okay. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you did because um, well, I'll, I have some stuff to say later as we kind of wrap <laughs> up the show. All um, right, because uh, you you deserve some props and some credit <laughs> for putting this project together that I, I'll, I'll get to in a bit. But um, huh, thanks, yeah, that man. was a uh, of course that was a that was a fun moment for me uh, to say yes to that. So thank you for offering. Yeah, man. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, what's the word accepting. <laughs> All right, but we're moving on. We're moving on. Who's after okay, okay. Blaine? Okay, so after Blaine, we have, of course, Mac. 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 Mac.
<laughs> oh, I love Mac. Mac. I mean, I heart Mac. Mac. All my Macking heart. Mac. Um, I, I think before I said Dylan was my favorite Mac. character. I think that's changed over the course of the movie. I think it's Mac. Mac. Bill Duke just plays the heck out of this character. Yeah, Bill Duke is really the man here, and I, he in in perfect Mac form just looks at the camera. <laughs> Cheers us with his flask and then takes a big old swig. We don't even really get a smile from him. We get kind of a, kind of a little, maybe a turned up mouth a little bit, kind little of a nice, yeah, like his eyes kind of smile, <laughs> if you want to say that. But, uh, I, I, I laugh because everybody else is just kind of like smiling or whatever. Well, Blaine is like spitting tobacco, like, yeah, as his, his he was actually a, a big time tobacco chewer anyway. So that's, not that much out of character, but like yeah. Mac is, Mac. I love Bill Duke is still taking a, a, a swig from the flask of Jack. I, yeah. I wonder if there's something in there. A little Jack Daniels. Oh, something, something for, I you bet. Know. I bet. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I think one of my favorite lines from him, just because it's one that we just used over and over again in this podcast <laughs> is the old badass Bush. Badass Bush. Badass Bush. Badass Bush. Badass Bush. Badass Bush. Uh, and then uh, one of my favorite moments from Mac. There's so many good Mac moments, Mac. but uh, I think Mac. 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 I have a lot of editing to do here, buddy. <laughs> I know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be quite long. Mac. Uh, I. I just uh, the shaving and the chopper. I always come back to that. It's this funny little um, personality quirk. Uh, somehow it just works and. Um, when I think about iconic moments of Mac in the movie, Mac. that's one of the first ones that comes to mind. So I wrote that little note down that shaving in the chopper is quintessential Mac. 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 Yeah, I rewatched what that really scene. About Mac. Mac. I rewatched that scene where he's in the chopper. What is that, minute eight or nine? Mm-hmm. And when is the first time I noticed, I don't know how I didn't notice it before, but when Blaine offers him the wacky tobacco, Mac does give like a little bit of the shake of the head. Uh, and then I think we mentioned this a lot in the chopper minute, but yeah, Blaine is, is quick to not push it with Mac because you find out Mac. later that they're good friends. They've mm. seen a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff together. Some badass bush. Badass bush. Badass bush. Badass bush. <laughs> uh, Mac, I mean, Mac has a lot of good stuff. I, I think by far though, my favorite, well, my favorite line from him has to be, uh, the interaction, well, the interactions kind of come in full circle. He has like a character arc with Dylan, Dylan. where the very antagonist in the beginning, he almost, you know, he stabs him in the back to grab the scorpion off of Dylan's right. back. Yep. Dylan! Um, we, we, we hear, hear a really good Dylan! Dylan! From, Dylan! 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 from Mac, uh, <laughs> during the exit of <laughs> Burning Gorilla Camp. But yeah. my favorite part, absolutely, or end any time, of course, anytime. 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 Makes for a good GIF, too. Anytime. Mm. I don't say GIF. I say GIF. Oh. Take that, Internet. Yeah. You like to say it like you like you say your peanut butter. It's fine. You're darn right. I love GIF peanut butter. More and more choosy mothers choose GIF. <laughs> I love watching the short boomerangs of the peanut butter <laughs> go spreading then it's not there anymore then it spreads again then it wow okay <laughs> you, you, you and jiff have a pretty tight relationship yeah i like my jiff gifs you yeah, know my you <laughs> so you're gonna make a gif of that gif yeah right. <laughs> I, I, i'm picking up that you're a gif man yeah oh uh, well, i'm a gif man through and through yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a gif of that gif if you want me to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did look up what the creator says. He says Stop it's pronounced it. yeah. gif. He's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking wrong. It's fucking wrong. Yeah. Okay, wait. Hang okay. on. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed yet tonight, everyone out there, I'm drinking while we're recording this. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm refilling. So here we go. This is a nice little fully work. Mm. There it is. Okay. All right. Nice. Okay, that was, that wasn't even. Yeah, that was the real deal. That's not. Can't even call that foley. That's the real thing. That's that's true. Yeah. Just Jack going in a glass. Yeah. Daniels. Jack in a glass. Jack Daniels. I, I'd say my. <laughs> I'd say my other favorite Mac moment. Him being my favorite character is, of course, just unloading old painless. It's the most of old sure. painless we see. It's, uh, I mean, I made a whole song about Mac. Mac! 
Mac. Uh, using the McDonald's <laughs> Mac tonight. I, I am really proud of that song. It's amazing. Yeah. Thanks. Like the first of two songs I created just for these characters. <laughs> Um, but it ends two. the first of the two characters because none of the other characters' deaths really like rang that. No, I'm just impressed you made two songs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely plug that in. Probably I don't know here towards the end. Uh, sure, but yeah, that's the one where it ends with the Mac tonight and like he's just firing <laughs> a minigun in the background. Oh. When the clock strikes yeah, half past six. Love you, Mac. Mac! Oh, love you, Mac. Mac! Okay. So after Mac, Mac. I, I was a little surprised by this uh, next character in the list, but after I thought about it more, it makes sense, which I'll talk about in a bit. But after mm. Mac, Mac, we get Mac. Anna Anna, and Anna Anna has her head down and then looks up and smiles into the camera, and yeah. we see that this is El Padilla Carrillo, Car- Carrillo, Carrillo, I'm saying it right, Carrillo. Um, so we get Anna Anna here, and. Uh, it's uh, interesting trying to decide like our favorite line or favorite moment because she is sort of a, a side character, um, but she does play an important role in the film and she does it very, very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess I would have to point to her, her little monologue that she gives about it's the only time that we get any, any history on the predator that uh, only, only glimpse that we get that the predator has been on earth for Many years, decades, centuries, who knows, we get from Anna Anna. So I think that little that little monologue that she delivers is probably her best scene. When I was little, we found a man. He looked like, like butchered. The old women in the village crossed themselves and whispered crazy things, strange things. El diablo cazador de hombres. Only in the hottest years this happens. And this year it grows hot. We begin finding our man. We found them sometimes without their skin. And sometimes much, much worse. El que hace trofeos de los hombres means the demon who makes trophies of man. That's right. That's what I'm going to say. Awesome. Uh, have, any, have any insights on Anna Anna other than her name is Anna Anna? <laughs> well, uh, along, Anna Anna, <laughs> uh, along with giving us kind of the background history, a little bit of the predator, the most we're ever going to hear in this movie. Uh, she's also giving us the first eyewitness testimony of, of saying what happened to Hawkins. Um, I remember learning what the jungle means in Spanish, which is La Selva. Mm. She says, because Panchito and, uh, and Anna are exchanging, uh, whatever questions and answers. Uh, she says, te dije lo que se fue la selva que se llevó. Que mas quieres que te diga? I told you what I know. It was the jungle that took him away. What else can I say? What else do you want me to tell you? Mm. Que pasó hoy? Que fue lo que viste? Te dije lo que se. Fue la selva que se lo llevó. ¿Qué más quieres que te diga? She says the same fucking thing. The jungle that came alive and took him. Mm. Wow, nice line reading there. Well done. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and I really like her her coming up with, or her uh, explaining what's happening in Spanish and then Panchito translating, like being that kind of like second level of revealing something. Like, oh, if we heard it right from her, like we would know right away. But like we still have to wait like those extra few seconds about – Mm. what exactly she saw. And that that's like a little moment of tension they're building up like ever so slightly before they tell us uh, what Ponchito okay. translates as uh, what she saw, where he says, she says the same fucking thing. Says the jungle came alive and took him. Hmm. And then, right. And then Dylan instantly is skeptical. Like, that's not what she said. Right. Right. right like, right. no, it, it is. It's, it's exactly what she said. 
Yeah. So she, she does kind of, uh, provide the glue a little bit to some of those scenes, um, mm-hmm. where we're trying to kind of figure out what, what, what's actually happening here and, and kind of sparks the conversation between those characters. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Anna, Anna. Thanks, Anna, Anna. Yeah. And, and she, she, let's just, like, before we move, last thing about Anna, Anna, like, she does have, like, the weirdest arc. Like, the mm-hmm. team comes in, kills her whole entire, <laughs> Gorilla squad, and it's like killed your you're coming with us, and then you're going to be one of the heroes, the survivors of the movie. Like, right. okay, you're going to cry when you see Dutch next. Like, why? I don't know. Right? right. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a, quite a leap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was earlier. I was saying I was a little surprised when Anna Anna came up first, but then I realized, well, in 1987, the two biggest names in this movie are one, obviously Schwarzenegger, but mm-hmm. two, the next biggest name is going to be Carl Weathers. Yes, right. So they save those two for last, right? So after Anna Anna, we get boom, Dylan, 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 Dylan. Carl Weathers. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. And he uh, catches the submachine gun, just like Jaleel White in uh, Family Matters. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that? Did I do that? Did I do that? Did I do that? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I shot a kid. I shot a kid. <laughs> just... <laughs> Shot my sister. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Laura. <laughs> Dylan has my. Dylan. Dylan. Thank you. Has my second favorite death. Mm. Uh, as you can tell, I like the gory deaths. Yeah, you do. I do. I do. I love practical effects and especially from the 80s. And I love that we get to see Dylan's arm chopped mm. off or, or blasted off with the predator's weapon. And then he gets, you know, right in the chest or neck area with the with the two blades on the predator's arm, and it's just a badass death sequence. So uh, he's my second favorite death, and my favorite line I think from uh, Dylan, 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 Dylan is uh, I think it's I think it might be it's because someone accused you of being the best. Because some damn fool accused you of being the best. Because some damn fool accused you of being the best. Because some damn fool accused you of being the best. That's it. That's it. I just like that line delivery. I think he he delivers lines in this movie, right? Like, everything is delivered purposefully. Thanks. And I think that's one of the best examples of it. He has a lot of great lines in this movie. So that's uh, that's one that jumps out to me. Yeah, he's he's yeah. always a skeptical up until he is almost face to face with the predator finally. Uh so he has that arc of becoming a believer right before uh being blown apart and stabbed. <laughs> uh, but I I I think uh, along those lines of what you're saying with his favorite your favorite line being there at the beginning. Yeah, I my favorite moment has to be him Shaking hands with Dutch, doing the epic handshake. Yeah, I, that's yeah. Because some damn fool accused you of being the best. Dylan, you son of a bitch. What's the matter? The CIA got you pushing too many pencils. Huh? Had enough? Make it easy on yourself, Dutch. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But didn't know when to quit, huh? Damn good to see you, Dutch. That's a good call. You're right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, part of that scene also extends to give us like background about Dutch's team, which you're not really going to hear. You'll hear bits and pieces throughout the movie. Mm. Uh, and here he is breaking down. Dylan is breaking down one of the team's missions. And yeah, you know, you learn that Dylan and Dutch used to work together. Maybe they're on a very similar team. Uh, but there's a lot that they pack in those first few minutes to give us the background of not just Dylan and Dutch, but also uh, the team a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And 
Yeah, Dylan is the other person I made the song for. The Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, I'm just impressed you made two songs, period. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Oh, and of course, he gives us one of our most frequent, our, our drop like every episode, which is the Target's the center of the Palapa. 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 That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Got to give him credit for that. Target's the center of the palapa. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have a palapa without him. I mean, we right? couldn't because it would, yeah, we weren't naming things palapas until uh, Dylan Dylan came Dylan. along. And- yeah, he reminded us that they're all palapas and that you must target the center of them. Target's the center of the palapa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Some damn fool accused you of being the best. Dylan, 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 Dylan. Dylan. I'm going in with you, Dutch. D I L L O N. D I L L O N. Dylan, 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 Dylan. Never knew how much I missed this, Dutch. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Target's the center of the palapa. Dylan, 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 Dylan. Dutch, on your knife. Dylan. We just stopped a major invasion. Dylan. Dylan! My men were in that chopper when it got here. Dylan. Dylan. They did the same thing to Jim Hope. Dylan, bastards. Dylan, 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 Dylan. Fucking lizard. D-I-L-L-O-N. Dylan. Thanks. D-I-L-L-O-N. Dylan, 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 Dylan. You really think this Boy Scout bullshit's gonna work? Hold it, Dutch. I'm going after Mac. Dylan. Dylan. I see you. Dylan! You son of a bitch. (laughs) All right. And so we get a nice smile from Dylan Dylan. as he lowers his machine gun. And then, of course, we cut to the back of Dutch who spins around. And interestingly, we don't get a smile from uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger here, do we? No. It's a freeze frame on his face looking slightly to the... Right or the left of the camera? I don't know what you call it when you're at the camera. I say camera right slightly. It's interesting because everybody else clearly they sat them down and was like, "Now do this thing for the end credits." Mm-hmm. And with Arnold, you feel like they did not. Like they, it, lo- it looks like they just grabbed a piece of maybe cut scene or 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 something and just grabbed it because he just spins around with a serious look on his face. And then they freeze frame, and that's it. We don't get a smile from uh, Arnold. And I, I, oh. I wonder if that's intentional or that's just what they had. I don't know. I'm curious about that. But uh, that's what we get. And, we, of course, we end on uh, Arnold. Who else can you end on? Yeah, that's that's all you can end on is Arnold as he looks. I guess he, <laughs> the way he's looking is kind of like he's looking at the credits as they roll up next to him. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would look kind of weird. It, it would definitely evoke Dirty Dozen if you had a, like a live-action face still moving while you – Right. Rolled up those first, what I say, nine credits where they're putting R.G. Armstrong as well uh, with the cast. Yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do a flashback here because of the very first time you had me on the show, mm-hmm. which was what did we just say? Episode eight, minute episode eight. eight. Yeah, I have it in front of me here. You you uh, uh, kind of interviewed me at the beginning of the show, I believe, and you asked me what my favorite line from the movie was. We are rescue team, not assassins. Mm. And I think I talked about Arnold's one-liners, and I think it may have settled on a sexual Tyrannosaurus. Bunch of slap jawed around here. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Right. No, I know. You just asked me, like, the, my favorite oh, line oh, in the movie, oh, period. Oh. And what I, was, what I was getting at is that now that we have talked about this movie for 103 hours or whatever <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, it's been a while. I th- it's been a while. It's been a while. I think that my favorite line from Arnold in this movie has to be Dylan! 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 What else can it be? It's the line that we say the most. Dylan! It's got to be the drop that's used the most. Dylan! It's it's now my favorite thing. Dylan! 
<laughs> it's a, oh my god! Anybody is named Dylan. If Dylan, anybody says the word Dylan, Dylan, mm-hmm. I will say it out loud. Dylan, even if no one around me has any idea what I'm talking about. Dylan, Ooh, uh, fair. Uh, to be fair, we do the same thing with Mac. Back. I think if we yeah. hear Mac, back. or something rhymes with Mac, back. like back, back, or track, back, track, yeah, or snack back. like I, I i have to act back. that all the time but uh yeah dylan <laughs> definitely holds this <laughs> zach back. uh like my brother's name um he even does that now too when i see him He's like, i zach. love seeing people in the palapa saying the same thing that they can't look at street signs or names or anything <laughs> without doing that it just gives me joy <laughs> yeah uh, i think christian morales posted a sign that says go back he says when, now when i hear back back I yelled at myself, Mac. 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 Thanks, guys. Oh, up all the time. Oh. I love that. I, I'm glad we could put that out in the world. So you're welcome. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, it just organically happened. I, I had no way of catching like when we first were starting with the Max Mac. and the Dylans, Dylan uh, of the podcast call-ins, but um, or callbacks or just callouts. Uh, but it, it's that's been one of the joys for sure of the podcast is having. It's like funny those. when you if I go back and listen to some of those early episodes, um, you were I think you were still getting your your sea legs with the editing, and uh, there was v- much much less uh, drops. One Valdez, Red Baron, mm-hmm. uh, a lot fewer of those going in there, and then it sort of evolved. And uh, thank God because <laughs> how how fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's some sequences where we're just going Mac back and forth or Mac 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 Dylan back and forth and it's like every time we do it there comes like the Dylan or the Mac Dylan 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 and Dylan I try to drop in all the variations of Dylan's and Dylan Dylan Dixon Max that I can find Mac 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 I think I think with Mac, I think Arnold says his name. I don't remember. It's something like eight or nine different times. Mac. And like I've used all those drops at some right. point. <laughs> Mac, Mac. Uh, so the only thing I was going to add about this sequence here is that um, I'm a little sad. I mean, this I don't think they would ever do this, but it the idea of it cracks me up to think about every time. Like, what if after I think Arnold, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, what if after Arnold they cut to the Predator. <laughs> <laughs> what is he even doing? And he's like, like a thumbs up. His, yeah, he's like fiddling with his arm cannon thing. He like looks up and laughs at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is he with mask or without mask? Oh, oh, it's got to be without mask. We got to yeah. see where mandibles go. Oh man, how great would that be? Oh, that'd be the great. Only, my only complaint on this is that um, they don't credit Kevin Peter Hall in this initial list. Mm-hmm, I and, know. Uh, you know, once it fades to black, it's the first name we get, which I think is appropriate. But uh, yeah. I wish they would have included him. I don't know. Maybe they wanted to highlight him by showing him all by himself on the next screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe that's fine. But uh, I do. I, I wish he could have been included in this group because he's, you know, arguably the most important character. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's. I mean, they named the movie after him. They named right, it Kevin right. Peter Hall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my name. Uh, I'd say my favorite line. It's it's going to be a tie between Dylan, Dylan, uh, and uh, stick around. It, it has to be a tie between those. Stick around. It's. I still say stick around all the time, and in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, that's what Arnold said in that movie. Yeah. yeah. Stick around. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like it's iconic. It's iconic for sure. Stick around. It's iconic, and it's like the one of the few jokey spots. And stick around. I like those jokey spots. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think he makes good use of a, a nice knife, a prop, if you will, and uh, yeah, sticks that guy. The what do we call him? The South American or the brown face Dave Barry? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> brown face Dave Barry. Stick around. <laughs> oh. oh, forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, should I quickly describe the the next section here, and we can kind of free roll it from there? What do you think? Uh, let's see. Or did you want to talk uh, TV tropes of this uh, credit sequence? Yeah, I guess I already kind of um, talked about where McTiernan was uh, 
whatever getting his influences from Mm -hmm. with dirty dozen. And for some reason, Bruce and McLeod. Yeah. Uh, but TV tropes labels this as a credits montage. The credits are rolling. Wasn't that a great show? Let's all reflect on the great moments. We just watched. Mm -hmm. Ah, here they come now. And they brought a stirring victorious musical track to track track. In short, the credit sequences of TV shows, movies, or video games include a montage of stills or clips from earlier in the show. And I think what makes this stand apart, the Predator one, is like, this is not a scene from the movie. None of these are scenes from the movie. They're just yeah. looking at the camera and just dicking around. And I think I think the closest one that sticks out to me of this list I have is uh, Princess Bride. Sure. Yeah, they I kind think. of do that. I, I might be misremembering right, right. it. Hang on. Go ahead. No, uh, Princess Bride. I, I can't remember. I think they might use clips from the movies, but it also feels like it might be like deleted scenes or like second takes or something. You know, because they feel a little bit different. I'm trying to remember, but um, it's a very similar feeling where they're cutting back on each character and flashing up their name. And- you know, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. Sorry. And you're wrong too. Sorry. No. Uh, but <laughs> it, it, it is movie. It is scenes from uh, the movie and mm. sometimes it'll show multiple scenes from that character uh, in the movie. Oh, okay. All right. Fine then. Fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fine. Uh, there's also uh, Top Gun was also listed. Star Trek Four, Kill Bill Volume 2, Little Shop of Horror. Oh, yeah. Breaking Dawn to Different Strokes, The Facts of Life, The Facts of Life, <laughs> and One Day at a Time. Mm. Mm. And like we talked about before, I mean, like any sitcom is like going to, here's the funny character moment for Reginald Vell Johnson. <laughs> Carl. Carl. I shot a kid. Uh, here's where he <laughs> catches the machine gun. And <laughs> she's really white. I shot a kid. Jaleel White digs, yeah, spits a huge thing of tobacco. <laughs> uh, but like we talked about, yeah, that's just a fun way. It's like the movie already tonally shifted partway through it from action to uh, horror slasher. Now it's like this last little pivot is <laughs> 80s sitcom, I guess. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? It is. It is funny, but man, I do... I do enjoy it when a movie sort of recognizes what it is and that, you know, hey, we've just all been on a pretty fun, crazy ride together. Mm-hmm. Let's see everybody one more time. I don't know. I, I, it, It's out of place and yet it feels very much in place. Like it feels like it works just fine. So yeah, I, I accept it. I accept. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I can't help but love it because we have that final – time seeing all the characters and we love all the characters yeah well all right so first part ends we get our little scroll of names here and then we fade to black Black. and uh we fade to black for a few seconds before the credits start rolling and of course we see kevin beater hall is the first name as the predator and then it just goes to our long list of of credits that are not actors and all the producers and gaffers and stunt coordinators, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And mm-hmm. so there ends the film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did I write notes for that? Uh, you not really things here, but, uh, yeah, it just ends with, uh, I mean, I could say just a black screen, but, uh, the last thing we see, it says, released by 20th Century Fox oh, yeah. Film Corporation, which, of course, is now owned by the mouse. Hey, hey, Predator, it's time to reinvigorate yourself with some of that Disney money. Mm, we'll talk more about that later because, you know, Disney owns so many properties now. It's so yeah. easy. Well, that does it. That brings us to the credits. And I don't know how much you want to talk about uh, the string of credits here, but... Um, I, I, I've got some other things that we can discuss as we close out our show and our project. But um, did you have other things you wanted to say about the credit sequence here before um, we kind of cap off the film? Sure, yeah. Uh, the special thanks to section, I paused there and wrote down all those things just to give one last little bit of research here, you know, Oh, what is it called? OR, original research in the mm-hmm. Wikipedia lingo. Uh, I noticed lots of Spanish names right away because if you remember, like, 
one of the big deals or one of the big things that had to happen with the movie production as it was shot solely in Mexico was they had to hire Mexican workers from the unions down there in order to produce the movie there, to make the movie there. And so there are a lot of Spanish names. That's why um, cool. I will talk more about two specific Spanish names in a little bit. Uh, but some notable names that stood out to me, um, I'm not going to go over those ones. I'll talk about Screaming Mad George. That's probably someone you know. Mm. I didn't really know about Screaming Mad George until like I researched him and then I realized, oh, I probably have heard of Screaming Mad George, who is a longtime special effects uh, artist uh, who goes by the the real name is Joji Tani, um, someone of Japanese origin. Huh. I'm not familiar with this person, but the credits that they have uh, accumulated here is quite impressive. Yeah, so reading the credits, I'm assuming that he worked on any kind of gory effects. Like, I'm thinking of, like, the skin bodies, just bodies. Just bodies. Uh, just bodies. I'm thinking of the Blaine death. Uh, I'm thinking of the bloody arm pulsating and pulling the trigger of the MP5 after Dylan's arm is blown off. Dylan, Dylan. Uh, but he also worked on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4. Mm. Big Trouble in Little China. Of course, great movie. Great. Uh, Space Truckers. Bride of Reanimator, mm. Children of the Corn 3, Tales from the Hood. Oh, Tales from the Hood is great. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Follow me. Oh, yes. Now we're going to get the shit. <laughs> Woo! We're going to get the shit now. Yeah. More bring around the ghosties, huh? Oh, yeah, the doo doo. <laughs> Sick of following yourself. Yeah. The poopy pop. Don't get to yeah, secretly a gory movie at times. It's pretty yeah. great. Progeny, which I don't know. Arena, I don't know. Society, I've definitely watched the Dead Meat episode on. Yikes. Yeah, society's freaking crazy. <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, and he directed something called The Giver, and I don't really hmm. know what that is. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, but props for this is this must have been early on i think in his career um and yeah they somehow like secretly wrangled all these uh you know top of their kind of uh what is the word i'm looking for top of their craft kind of people with someone like an alan silvestri with someone like a yeah. don mcalpine and um we didn't know at the time but mctiernan of course yeah <laughs> Uh, and Screaming Mad George. Uh, they also had the, thanks to the knives that were designed and built by Jack Crane, who uh, also famously provided the knives to Commando. And that's where his knife gained the most popularity, the life support knife, if you remember that. This is not a knife, but this is a knife. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we used on Predator. Yes, that's right. Yeah, he also made knives for Demolition Man, Predator 2, Roadhouse, and, of course, Executive Decision. Oh, you got to have a knife man. Yeah, got to have a in, in, Along with the knife man, what else do you have to have? A good gun guy. And they rented their weapons and probably had this company, Stembridge Gun Rental, create some of the weapons. And most notably, of course, they made Old Painless, the minigun used here yes. in a Terminator 2. You probably first heard about the machine gun through comic books or the movies. It replaced the six-shooter as the entertainment gun of choice as we shifted from the days of the Old West to World War II. If anything, the machine gun has gained in popularity during the last few years with the help of people like Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. In 1991, it's been pretty pretty good, really. We're doing uh, Terminator 2. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. I didn't realize this. I, read an art, I was reading an article for research on Stembridge, and they made... Movie guns for 80, 80 years, 1919 to 1999. What? Including such like classics as the original King Kong, 1932, mm. the first All Quiet on the Western Front, Bridge Over the River Kwai, High Noon, Shane, Stagecoach, The Guns of Navarone, The Longest Day, The Wild Bunch, the original True Grit, and then they jumped into like more modern things, modern being the 80s. Yeah. Uh, 1941, Above the Law, Batman Returns, Commando, Clear and Present Danger. It was a whole list of wow. movies that you've heard of or seen. Predator 2, Lethal Weapon, Raiders of the Lost Ark, T1 and T2, of course. Uh, Red Dawn, Total Recall, True Lies, The Moonwalker Video, Waterworld. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, they have, um, that's quite a list. Yeah, so another like top of their uh, game company contributing to Predator, of course, which uh, had really good uh, weapon shots like on camera, but also shooting the weapons. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cool suit for the Predator was developed and provided by Diligent Dwarves Effects Lab, which became Global Effects Incorporated, which makes, if you've seen a space movie in the last 20 or 30 years, which... They make the spacesuits. They make the spacesuits for movies. They make other costumes mm-hmm. uh, like X Men: Dark Phoenix, Jumanji Two, Ali, Twelve Monkeys, Adam's Family Two, Twenty Four, Blank Man, Forrest Gump, Deep Impact, as well as Armageddon, mm-hmm. Charlie's Angels, <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop Three. Another like top of their game company contributing. You don't even know they make it look so good on screen, right? Like. Yeah. The intricate craft of making a costume is a dying art in Hollywood as computer generated imagery dominates the blockbusters. But here at Global Effects Inc. in North Hollywood, California, workers sell handmade costumes and props. The 11,000 square foot facility provides everything from body armor to spacesuits for movies, TV, museums, and aerospace industry. Yeah, these are these are outfits that like went on to be major players in the film world. Yes. Yeah, all involved with this uh little jungle alien movie. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Which McTiernan like still come on, McTiernan, get with it. This is a good movie. Are you kidding? <laughs> right. Like it takes so much effort to make something look like simply amazing like this movie. Uh let's see, Dado Tech Incorporated, uh, which if I remember correctly, I don't uh, Data Tech Incorporated, if I remember correctly, is was like a big voice modulator, like mm. voice encryption company. So they must have been working with like the Predator sound effects, the Predator voice. Um, and now that I think they're owned by the FBI, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, Brad Naples from New England Digital uh, came up with the digital synthesizer, which was really helping to layer sounds and samples into tracks, tracks, tracks. Next. So you'd have Alan Silvestri working with this company, specifically mm. with this digital synthesizer. I can't remember what it's called now. It's like the Sylvathia or something like that. This brings us neatly into the final part of our look at Predator textures, and that's the Synclavier. What is the Synclavier? Well, it was one of the earliest digital sampling synthesizers with the initial versions developed in the late 70s. By 1987, when the Predator score was recorded, the second and third versions had been developed, and I'm not exactly sure which Silvestri used, but it was either the Synclavier 2 or 3. Now, I can guarantee you've heard of Synclavier because one of the presets on the machine was this. Now, one distinctive sound that's repeated throughout the score is this log drum rhythm. As it's replayed at different speeds, but at the same pitch, as would be possible on the synclavier and impossible on a tape machine, I suspect this is the source of that sound. They ended up using like layers to help create like the predator sound effects, but also like just the music itself, the tracks themselves where they would uh, layer tracks on tracks, tracks on tracks on tracks, tracks on tracks and tracks. Uh, let's see. Second to last thing I'll mention from these credits that stood out was group four recorders. This was the recording studio for the predator soundtrack and lots of other movie and TV soundtracks. Uh, if you go there, like it shows the studio is closed, but it also lists everything recorded there. And it is a long list of popular movies. Uh, mm. A lot of Alan Silvestri's scores were recorded there. He must have made that like one of his favorite places, but also James Horner and a couple other well-known Hollywood uh, soundtrack composers. I can't remember their names. Wow. Yeah, I know. It just, just, it just star upon star, just mega company on mega company. He didn't even realize. Uh, and then, not so related to that is this picture is dedicated to the memories of Augustine Ituarte and Federico Isunza, who are two location scouts who died on March 31st, 1986, when Mexicana flight 940 crashed into El Carbon, a mountain in the rugged Sierra Madre Occidental mountain range northwest of, of Mexico City. So mm. they 
had a couple scouts out and about on, yeah, going out, checking out different places to film the movie. Uh, a year before it came out. So the movie's in production from, I think shortly after their death, I think it started in April of 1986, uh, but they died in this plane crash uh, due to mechanical failure. And that's why their names are mentioned at the end of the credits, which I thought was really neat. It was really cool of them to uh, include them. Like you wouldn't think of like location scouts as like necessarily someone on your list uh, of credits, but you have to have people finding out where you're going to shoot this awesome alien action movie yeah man that's uh, that's that's good r.i.p to those two location scouts yeah yeah oh i I guess the last thanks i don't i I just just a curious thanks they thank the restaurant el aden de mismaloya de puerto vallarta uh which uh is i guess like the restaurant closest to where the gorilla camp was if i remember correctly (laughs) oh yeah yeah, I, th- I think if you're visiting uh, where this, like the locations where this was shot, the easiest one would be go to Puerto Vallarta. You go south down, you know, south on the coast, 20 miles or so. And then you head up the river, Mismaloya, I think it is. I don't remember if that's the name of it. Um, but yeah, I guess there was a restaurant at one time, like a restaurant slash hotel maybe. Uh, and, and since this movie was film there it's it's closed but it's interesting they thank the actual restaurant i love that they must have spent a bunch of time there getting meals yeah. getting drinks you know diarrhea yeah getting diarrhea yeah Matazuma revenge oh. it's back <laughs> <laughs> it's back find a way out of this hole <laughs> hey billy give me a way out of this hole oh well uh Cheers to you, John Zabriskie. We uh, we made it through this project. Thanks, Only took man. Us, uh, two and a half years. I'm, I'm you can't see me, but I'm lifting up my whiskey right here, and uh, dink, there it is. So, cheers to us. Cheers to you. Yeah, cheers to you, Jeff. Yeah, I should uh, tell all the listeners out there that um, this uh, this project, this podcast, was 100 percent your your baby, your project, your idea, and. Um, <laughs> Jump in anytime to correct me, but you started this with your brother, Aaron, correct? I did. Yep. And you guys made it about eight episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I did call, call a phone a friend. Before your brother moved halfway around the world. <laughs> uh, but he, he moved halfway around the world for um, professional reasons. Um, but uh, no, you invited me on the show um, just as a guest. I did a couple episodes with you, and that was really fun. And then, as mentioned earlier, you uh, asked me to come on uh, as a permanent co-host, and uh, I'm really glad I said yes. And um, everyone out there should know that you do almost all the research. You do all the research. You, <laughs> you do all the editing. You do all the publishing. You do all the social media uh, keep up. Um, you maintain the Twitter account, the Facebook account, the Palapa on Facebook. Um, you do it all. I just show up once a week and, and throw out some silly jokes and pour some whiskey in a glass. So um, everyone, I just want to acknowledge the amount of work that you have put into this project. And you should be very, very proud of yourself because uh, – it was a lot of work and we both uh, have busy lives. We're both married with kids and we both have other full-time jobs and you've managed to see this project to its conclusion. And uh, for that, you should be commended. So cheers to you, John Zabriskie. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, thanks Jeff. And, and really uh, I don't think this podcast would be nearly the place it was without uh, you as such a solid co-host because uh, I feel like what I bring in kind of like the analysis and the the mountains of research is <laughs> is like the the flavor is the 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 color commentary as they say in sports like I, I'm pretty good I feel like as like nailing down like what happened why it happened but you're the one who's able to take us a step back or sometimes a step forward and, and say like, look at this, like, isn't this kind of ridiculous? Or uh, <laughs> what do you think of this? You're, you're always good at challenging me with 
these questions or these new insights that I don't think about. Um, and I think a lot of that is your ability to go off the cuff. Like, I just don't feel like I have that ability. Like I'm trying to do it right now. And it is awful. It is like, <laughs> it is like nails on a chalkboard for me, but I, I do want to thank you for bringing that and for being willing to stick around, stick around, stick around, stick around, stick around, uh, st- to stick around and do this week after week. Like we said, for two years, I have it on my, uh, list here. You became permanent co-host on November 10th, 2018. So that's wow. two plus years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I really couldn't have done it without such a solid co-host. So I really appreciate you being there um, and just willing to go along on the ride. I really appreciate that. Hey, it was a pleasure. Um, and uh, this has been a very, very fun project to do and uh, a good learning experience. Um, I never thought I would ever be on a podcast before. And so... <laughs> <laughs> You've done it. I have, and uh, and I enjoy it. And I, I don't know what uh, head uh, what is in the future in terms of any podcasting for either one of us. But um, this has been a really cool little just creative project to do. So um, again, thank you uh, for all of that, and thank you for inviting me on in the first place. So yeah, cheers. man. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. I'd, yeah, just serendipitous all the way around for having this work out how it did and just uh, I'm really lucky to to have like I said you and uh to have like family support like people ask about it all the time in the family like how's the podcast like people at work occasionally ask mm-hmm. uh, so that's that's been nice to yeah kind of kind of hold myself accountable a little bit I think the only time I felt like honestly giving up was just like after Aaron and I recorded the first episode in 2017 there was a whole year that went by before we like picked it up in earnest uh, in 2018. And that was, um, yeah, it was, it was born out of an idea just to give you a little history. Um, Zach, yeah, wait, wait, you guys recorded the first episode and then let it sit for a year before recording the second the one? whole year. Yeah. We recorded oh, that. One. I didn't know that. Yeah. September 1st, 2017. And Release it on August 26, 2018. Hello, welcome to Predator Minute, the podcast where we break down the 1987 movie Predator one minute at a time. I am John. And I am Aaron. And we are starting off with minute one. That's why I sound so much younger than between one and two. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's what I was thinking when I heard that episode, Marin. <laughs> oh, sounds young. <laughs> Welcome to Predator Minute. <laughs> my mom just let me watch it. It's a very special time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Growing hair in all weird places and <laughs> found a magazine in the woods. <laughs> it's always, it's always in the happen. woods. It's always in the woods. It's always Thank in you. the woods. Thank you, mystery woodsman. The more I think about it, the more I'm creeped out. Anybody <laughs> under the age of 35 has no idea what we're talking about. Uh, uh, nor should you. Um, <laughs> but I, just just give a little history. I don't know if I've ever talked about where the show came from. Like, what was the genesis? It was uh, Zach and I, so other brother of the show and guest mm-hmm. of the show, Zach, and I were driving out from Seattle area to Spokane area to surprise Aaron and his wife for their baby shower. Um, it's Aaron, Aaron's Aaron, Aaron, Aaron can be like that sometimes where he's like, I don't know. I don't necessarily like want everybody there. Like they're just having for some reason, a baby shower. They told us when it was and where it was, but they weren't necessarily saying like, you have to be there. And so they didn't like, invite you. <laughs> yeah. That's my polite way of saying they didn't really like officially invite us. Like they said where and when it was and they didn't, really seemed they, they probably weren't going to have a problem if we showed up. So Zach and I, it's like the middle of summer 2017. We're like, we're, we're just going to surprise them. We'll rent an Airbnb in the night in the area uh, for that night. And so we just drove out, drove the whatever five and a half ish hours out there. And on the way there, uh, one of the uh, podcasts I downloaded a bunch of episodes to listen to was Star Wars Minute because mm-hmm. uh, that was the one I was listening to at the time. That was the big movies by minute. Um, podcast I listened to. That was the and one. So I, yeah, that was that was like the big starter with Alex Robinson and Pete the Retailer. And then like I just kind of brainstormed with Zach like on the way back after seeing Aaron surprising them for the uh baby shower and then the next morning driving back home to the Seattle area. We we're just 
talking and kind of spitballing and I was I was really thinking like man I've listened to a lot of pad- podcasts over the years I love to make one but like I hadn't really had like an inkling of what it can be about until yeah. I had my like my niche like my thing like my format I can't just BS my way through something I have to have a format and it turns out like the movies by minute one really uh struck a chord with me and I, I thought long and hard about what movie I would do and just like I don't know if I came up with in the car ride or in just talking to Aaron like over the next week, but some reason just predator, which was a movie that Aaron and I just cherished from our childhood. We quoted, you know, on, on a daily basis or whenever we talked to each other with, you know, anytime and it's nothing major. Anytime. I guess it's nothing major. Definitely didn't quote the Max and the Dylans at the time. Mac, sure. Dylan. Mac Dylan. But we had our favorite moments. We were talking about it and then, yeah, we recorded that first episode way back in 2017. I held on to it and I think we kind of convinced each other like we should just move forward with it, keep recording episodes and keep uh, releasing episodes. And it's just kind of been almost nonstop since that first episode came back. I think I was doing the math and I think there's something like somewhere between like, I don't know, 15 or so weeks where I didn't release between then and now, mm-hmm. but it's, it's still, it's still a pretty, a cool feat to say that I accomplished. I mean, we do have young kids, you and I, so uh, that is a, a little bit of a hamstringer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think people who have been listening kind of understand that this is a, this is a completely 100% independent project by two guys that are married with full-time jobs and we both have two kids. And so that speaks to the irregularity with which our episodes get published. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I, with that said, it's actually, I, th- I still think we've been pretty consistent at times. And, and, uh, and yeah, if, if that number is right, it's only been 15 times in the whole period that we haven't released one that that's pretty good. I think it is. I don't, I can't, I can't say for sure, but I'm sure it's, it's somewhere around there. Like it's not, yeah. it's not too bad. Well, uh, thank God you had the idea because uh, this is pretty cool, and um, I feel quite accomplished that we have yeah. gotten to the end for sure. Um, should we should we throw it to the the palapa? I mean, I did ask them a question. Target the center of the palapa. <laughs> oh yeah, did you want? Yeah, that's right. We were gonna read off some of their comments and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just I guess, and I want to throw it to the guest too, unless. Uh, yeah, no, we should definitely we should definitely give the guests some credit. How about we do this? We'll we'll do the guests first because it's just kind of reading off the names, and then we'll uh, read off what the Palapa was leaving us off with in terms of like favorite movie memories and podcast memories. Sure, that sounds great. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw it to sort by sheet, sort range by column. Let's just do that for now. Um, we didn't have a ton of guests on. It's just. Again, with you mentioning, uh, you know, being married and having little kids, it does kind of put a hamper <laughs> on like recording times. Like we have a very set recording time and if other people can't make it, then we can't really have them on. Uh, we only really ever made exceptions a few times. Uh, and uh, I'm glad we had the guests on that we did. Um, I feel like they always added a fresh perspective. So I was just going to go ahead and list off names of uh, the guests who were on with us. Yeah, do it. Yeah, we should give them some credit for do sure. It. Okay. Uh, well, first off, of course, Aaron used to be a co-host of the show. He was co-host with me for the first few episodes, and then he was on a couple more times as a guest. Aaron's a brisky. There's Adam Pranica, a mutual friend of ours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Professional podcaster. Professional podcaster of uh, The Greatest Gen. Uh, and uh, Alan Batchelder, a co-worker of mine and former co-worker with you. Movie buff. Movie buff. Uh, my dad, Bill Zabriski, was on to talk technical things with the uh, thermal vision from the That's Predator. Right. That's right. Yeah. We had the guys on from Comics and Motion and the VHS Strikes Back, Dave Horrocks and Chris Phelps. They were a blast to have on. What a great. Great couple guys. Like that was, yeah. that's, that's one of the, I, I loved all our guests that we had, but that is definitely a highlight for me. That was super fun. For sure. And also they had us on their show, the VHS yes. strikes back to talk Ninja three, the domination. <laughs> they just, uh, released an episode, uh, of another 
a shitty movie. It's funny how they bounce back and forth between like great movies and every once in a while one pops up and it's just this awful movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell comes to Frogtown. Hell comes to Frogtown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that and I was like, oh yes, that's an instant download for me to hear them talk about that one. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So fun. If, if I had discovered them earlier, they would have been on the show uh, a couple more times, but it honestly took like a year between Dave and myself, <laughs> Twitter messaging each other, like, when can we be on the show? We're like, well, I'm in, yeah. you know, I'm in England. So it's that eight hour difference. Like, oh man, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had Eric Deutsch, who was on, I'm counting six different episodes. He might be our most frequent guest. I think he is Eric Deutsch from, of course, Escape from New York minute and Flash Gordon minute. He, of course, gave us a <laughs> Yeah, he gave us the only drop I use from a guest, which is, you set us up. No, it's, 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 you set us up. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. You set us up. It's all bullshit. Set us up. Love that. (laughs) Yeah. You set us up. It's all bullshit. Uh, so he was on several times and just a blast to have Eric on just a, uh, uh, easygoing guy and one of the guests who also would partake in the Mac and the Dylan. <laughs> yep. Yep. He was into it. <laughs> Dylan. He would sometimes go, Dylan? Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Uh, we had Eric Siska from We Hate Movies yes. and hooked on TJ Hooker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To talk about. Uh, the get to the chopper line. Get to the chopper! Man, the he chopper. was fun to have on too. What a funny guy. He's a great follow on Twitter too. If you guys, uh, anybody out there is on the Twitter sphere, check out Eric Siska. Yeah, one of my few follows there on Twitter is mm-hmm. him and the other WHM guys. Um, I wonder if I follow you. I should. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> we had uh, Jerry Porter and Tom Taylor from the Indiana Jones Minute. Jones! 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 To talk about when Billy discovers the bodies of these... Just bodies. Just bodies. Just bodies. Skin soldiers. Just bodies. Just bodies. Jim Hopper. Jim Hopper. Max, put him down. Uh, let's see. We had you on for a few minutes there, of course. Oh, that, went, that was a horrible decision. I'm John. Hi, Mary. Uh, with us today is our first ever guest, Jeff. Hi there. Jeff is a buddy of mine from the teaching biz. Yes. And Thank you for having me on. I'm very excited to be here with you too. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> that really went downhill fast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And now I'm stuck with you. Yeah. Just attach uh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had Patrick Zabriskie, my cousin. He was uh, right. really liking to talk about Predator, but also other movies and soundtracks. Uh, we had Scott Corelli and Nick Jimenez from the Cornetto Trilogy Minute. Right. That's I'm right. Stalling. I'm bringing this up. And the Back to the Future Minute. Uh, to let's see, what are they talking about? I don't remember specific what they're talking about because I have my notes out of order here. Mm-hmm. I can come back to that later. Uh, we had my wife's cousin Scott Fogel on for a couple minutes, uh, talking about the fun little transitional scene as the team is rappelling out of the helicopter. Uh, we had Toby Capwell. Oh, uh, yeah. From, yeah, that's right. From the Wallace Collection, it's a collection of armaments, we weapons. Armor. Yeah, we talked weapons. Weapons. We yeah. also talked about like the Predator team as a group of knights. Uh, so that was fun to have him on with his expertise. He's also been on Indiana Jones Minute quite a few times. Uh, and we also had my brother, my other brother, Zach Zabriskie, uh, talking about the stick around and knock knock lines. Stick around. Knock knock. Yes. I was, I was going to say, I'm almost, I'm almost envious of him for being on those minutes, but it's like, well, I, I was on those minutes too. <laughs> Cat counts, but we were all there. Around. We were all there. Yeah. I believe he did say that was his favorite line. It is my favorite line too. The stick around. Stick around. I, I think I remember that. Yep. That was fun. Yeah. 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 Now I'm just now looking at what did we have Scott and Nick on for? Uh, let's see. Oh, it was the broke dick dog. That's oh, right. that, was, that was so fun. Dick I wouldn't wish that on a broke dick dog. I wouldn't wish that on a broke dick dog. Broke dick dog. I wouldn't wish that on a broke dick dog. And then Shane or Hawkins finally lands the joke with Billy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then, gosh, do you want to do you want to talk about the Palapa a little bit? Target the center of the Palapa. Yeah. So you uh, made a post in the Palapa uh, saying, uh, "Listeners, fan of Predator." 
We are recording the final episode. We wanted to hear from you. As always, thank you for participating here in the Palapa. Thank you for, or please share your favorite memories from the movie and or the podcast. And we may read your comments on the air. So, uh, yeah, should we read some comments on the air? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Alan, Batch- <laughs> Alan Batchelder says, I loved when you had that one guy on. I'm John Zabriskie. And I'm Jeff Glover. And I'm Alan Batchelder. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Deutsch, the first comment on that post says, you set us up. It's all bullshit. You set us up. It's all bullshit. <laughs> the best and only comment he could have made. You set us up. It's all bullshit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Brad Mole uh, says, the handshake is a fave, the cast, and the predator design. I wish I was a young boy seeing it for the first time back in the 80s. I get it, Brad. On the podcast front, the soundboard has been fantastic. Dylan! Dylan! Not Dylan. only Predator clips, but clips from other films as well. Comedic gold. Thanks, Brad. 94. Very Thanks, nice. Brad. Super nice. Joseph Parker says, This movie has always been one of my t- most favorite top five easily. Same, Joseph. I talked about my top five hmm. uh, last minute, but I kind of cut off the conversation. But for me, it's like Star Wars, the motion picture, of course, the first one. Uh, episode four, A New Hope. Uh, and then it's uh, Predator, it's Last Crusade, Hot Fuzz, and the first Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, uh, I like the. Uh, I'd love to hear your other uh, four rounding out the top five there, Joseph. I'm happy to say you guys have done this minute by minute coverage wonderfully. Thank you. No. Couldn't ask for better. You guys are super funny and enjoyable to listen to. I can no longer hear an act word and not want to say, Mac! Mac! Yeah, you and me both, Joseph Parker. <laughs> yeah, you and me three. Uh, I know you're probably ready to be done with movie by minute podcasting, but I hope you'll at least do a commentary for Predator 2. That's definitely in the pipes. Either way, <laughs> thanks for the many hours of excellent podcasting. Wow, thanks, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doug Barbeau says, what we've got here is a failure to communicate. Some men you just can't reach. <laughs> So you get what we had here last week, which is the way he wants it. Well, he gets it. I don't like it any more than you men. I have been and always shall be your friend. Thanks, Doug, for always posting uh, quotes from other movies for us to read. (laughs) He also threw in the other – for the second time, he threw in the Jaws – monologue from about about his – his ship going down to Japanese right. torpedoes and everybody yep. being eaten by sharks after they delivered the bomb. He anyway, to us. Yeah. We delivered the bomb. Yeah. I'll just kind of shorten it. There you go. Yeah, exactly. He emailed. Yeah. So we quotes, I have been and always shall be your friend. Isn't that Spock? I have been and always shall be your friend. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Zach Zabriskie says, Zach, Mac, <laughs> Zach, Mac, Zach, Mac. Great work on seeing it through to the end. Thanks for having me on for some of the earlier episodes. And if I may pat myself on the back, back, Mac, he, back. Gives himself, Mac. he gives us up the back. I love it with the exclamation. <laughs> it was a joy to guest on my favorite minute. Stick around. Stick around. Stick around. Stick around. And brainstorm ideas to name the community page. It feels like I was a part of it. That's right. Because Zach, part of it, Zach? Zach really uh, named the group, I believe. I was yeah. like bouncing ideas off him. And he was like, name it with the Palapa. Okay, the Predator Minute, Predator Minute listeners Palapa targets the center of the Palapa. 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 Uh, Brian Campbell. Ah, 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 ah. Targets the center of the Palapa. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I can't do it. Brian Campus says, great job, guys. I love this movie and I love this podcast. Please continue on and do Predator 2. I still need to post all the pages from my ticket stub collection. <laughs> Thanks for all the laughs. Thank you, Brian. And Brian has been posting uh, ticket stub collections from all the years that we discuss on the podcast, which has been super fun to see in the Palapa. So... Um, oh, Brad Mole had one more comment there too. Oh yeah, Brad Mole chimed back yeah. in and said, "I forgot." <laughs> well, Brad forgot. 
I forgot. That minigun. More importantly, the Bill Duke begins the scene and the fact that it was modified to hold. And the pure jungle destruction is magical. It I sure agree. is. 100% Brad. <laughs> Gosh, what else? I uh, can't think of anything else. Christian Morales has been really good about posting pictures, memes. Uh, there's a movie reaction. First time watching Predator. Uh, that'd be a fun little thing to check out there. And there's quite... Quite a bit of discussion uh, about T-1000 versus the Predator. I don't know where that came from, Jeff. Because, you know, if you're inciting a, inciting a comment flood on Facebook. Good. Down. Yeah. All right. Shout so, Go ahead. I think this might be a good way to close out our last episode. Is based on the um, spirited conversation in the Palapa about whether or not the Predator would would beat uh, various other villains. I made a little list and I'm going to ask you, John predator versus blank. Who wins? Are you ready? Versus Blaine. That's predator. He blew (laughs) apart like blank blank. Predator wins. (laughs) Predator versus blank. So I'll fill in here. All right. So um, predator versus Jason Voorhees. Who wins? It's hard to say. Uh, God, probably Jason because Jason can't be killed. I was going to say, is it early Jason from the first four movies who is a normal human? Or is it Jason from the later movies who is some sort of uh, uh, supernatural zombie killer that can't actually die? Yeah. I mean, gosh, they they run in the same circle, right? Just like (laughs) killing off people in the woods. Yeah. But like, I mean, space Jason, uh, like if, if, if that's like the height of Jason's, they'd probably be space Jason. Space Jason would win. Jason wins. I think, um, Jason from Friday two would, would probably lose. Predator wins. I uh, mean, oh yeah, Friday. I was like, wait, did you say nightmare? No, you said Friday. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Predator. Sorry. Along the, along the same lines, uh, Predator versus Freddy Krueger. <laughs> so this has to be while well, Predator dreams, right? Right. Does uh, Predator dream? <laughs> does Predator dream of electric duches? Uh, I'm gonna go with the Predator here. I think the Predator can somehow outwit because in every movie, like. Freddy's killed, right? I don't think every movie Jason's killed. Like maybe most of the movies Jason's killed, but yeah, I, I agree with you here. Cause it's always some teenagers that seem to kill off Freddy. So the predator that, and you always right. know who Freddy is. It's Robert England. It's like, <laughs> he's a personality and it's like right. his personality is way more annoying than Jason's. So I, I have to go with predator here. Predator wins. All right. So I chose all kind of villains and bad guys except for one. And so the one is right here. Um, Predator versus Robocop. Oh, man. I love Robocop. I know. He's got that gun. Yeah. Oh, he has that gun. Dick. <laughs> shoot them all in the dick. Did you shoot Pre- does the Predator have a dick to shoot? Would he shoot Predator in the dick? <laughs> I bet he does. Maybe the dick is on the knee or something, though. I don't know. <laughs> Wow, predator tongue. Damn it. Was that, was that on Star Trek where he like kicks someone in the knee and says like, that's where his genitals <laughs> are or something? I was lucky that thing had knees. That was not his knee. Not everybody keeps their genitals in the same place, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that the predator is just hung like a horse. <laughs> That's not his leg. That's his, that's his junk. Predator wins. When he jumps around the jungle, you know how his hair kind of flows around? Oh. So does his dick. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. I have to give it to Predator. I don't. I think I Predator know. wins. Yeah. Robocop's a little bit too much of a clanker for. Yeah. You know, Robocop's not getting, getting around the jungle fast. No, he has a little bit of melee skills, but I think the Predator would figure out how to okay. melee him. Predator wins. All right. Um, predator versus Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> I would oh, 100% man. play all of these movies, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, instantly. Those are instant classics, each one yeah. of them. Predator versus Jaws. <laughs> predator versus Jaws. 
Who would win? I, I will say I did look up Predator versus T-1000, by the way. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead. Mm. I haven't seen your list or anything like that, but there are full on discussions on Reddit about who's going to win between T-1000 and Predator. Wow. Really? Yeah, it's interesting stuff. I, I don't necessarily stand by my original statement after the Palapa really brought the pain, but mm. uh, there's some, there's some arguments to be made, but you have to have the conditions right for the Predator. And then for that, I think, yeah, that's kind of telling you the answer right there. Well, if it's like this and this and this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I see Predator versus Jaws. I see Predator. I mean, <laughs> Jaws can't leave the water and Predator yeah. can just shoot laser beams into the water. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Predator. Okay. Um, predator wins. Predator versus Darth Vader. Oh, my gosh. Now you're hitting close to home. I know. Huh. I mean, that's some... That's some next level stuff. That would be like how much can can Vader use the Force, right? But we we know Vader Vader can deflect you know blaster shots. Can he deflect a laser cannon from? Yeah. I mean, it's another laser, so maybe. Yeah, Vader hmm. has the Force. Vader can like I'm sure sense things coming. I think I might have to give it to Vader. I might have to give it to Vader. I mean, you don't understand like just the power of the Force. Just the Force is. You know what? What gives us our energy? It penetrates us. It binds us. It- Apology accepted. Right. Sub sub question. What about Palpatine? Oh, mm. Palpatine. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Are we talking like Return of the Jedi? Palpatine, Rise yeah. of Skywalker. Well, you don't remember Rise of Skywalker, but um, no, I don't. That's prequel. No, I was thinking like like original trilogy Palpatine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I probably have to give it to the Predator there because I think by then Palpatine seems a lot less nimble. Yeah. Uh, versus in the prequels, he's like jumping and flipping around like another, I don't know, Anakin Skywalker or yeah, Qui Gon Jinn or something like that. Okay. All right. We'll mark that one for Predator. Predator wins. Yeah. Um, Predator versus Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're going like heavy hitters. <laughs> Did you just Google a list of like best movie villains? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, got me. Um, I mean, I have to give that one to Sauron. Sorry, unless the Predator just knows to blow the finger with the ring on it off. Nope. All right. I agree. Um, Predator versus Agent Smith from the Matrix trilogy. Oh man, that is a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. I, did you have an answer for the Sauron? I think Sauron wins. Yeah, Very Predator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Agent Smith can bend time and space, kind of. Yeah, uh, Mister Anderson. Mister Anderson. This is the sound of inevitability. <laughs> Hear that, Mister Anderson? That is the sound of inevitability. Yes. Oh, it's the smell. It's the smell. <laughs> it's the smell. It's the smell. You're Meat. a virus. You're a virus. A virus. Morpheus. But I, I guess <laughs> now you're like talking about, you're talking about time and space. Like, is the predator in the matrix? Then? I know that, that that's a big existential question, right? Is the predator uh-huh. living in the matrix? Can the predator bend the matrix like the one, or is he just some, uh, or does the bait, does the predator live outside the matrix in the underground, uh, you know, human world? Yeah, Zion. Zion. Thank you. It's one big orgy. I think the predator, would enjoy that. I don't know if the predator big swinging dick we've already established. Yeah, he's already wearing his fishnets. <laughs> uh, and he has like a vagina for a mouth, so I think he's <laughs> he's he's uh <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> he's just ready to go down. He's he's like, I'm gonna take on wait, like how many agent smiths have to take on? <laughs> what do you mean take on? Can you you know maybe elaborate? Uh Gosh, he wants like to a, in the matrix? a predator, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I might not have a choice, but uh, I mean, if he's in the matrix, it's Smith all the way. I think so too. All right, yeah, because Smith is just everywhere and anywhere, and multiples of Smith. Okay, um, Bummer, man, I'm really, I'm really feeling down now. I thought the predator was like had it made in the shade. No, oh, you'll feel better after a couple more of these. Um, oh, okay. It's the smell. Predator versus uh, Scar from The Lion King. 
<laughs> now you're just going up a list of best villains. When I'm king, what'll that make you? A monkey's uncle. Uh, I think Predator wins that. And Predator wins. Predator wins. Predator wins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Predator versus uh, Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> That's Predator, but you know, I'm sure Hannibal Lecter would enjoy it. He Hannibal Lecter would like get in his head for a little while. Yeah, exactly. He'd be like convincing the predator to skin himself for a little bit. Right. It's like, what, what the fuck am I doing? Predator, did you cry when you heard those sheep? Predator wins. All right. Um, mark that for Predator. Um, yeah. Predator versus Pinhead. Oh man, I don't know my Pinhead very well. Is Pinhead another one who's like uh, manipulating time and space? Sort of. Pinhead is like a like a dark lord from a interdimensional hell world. Huh. So mm-hmm. I might give it to Pinhead. Just yeah. that that's where he comes from. <laughs> does he have such delicious sights to show you? Is that him? Yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. Uh, See, so yeah, the predator might be kind of that. Might be his kink, you know. Too is like being lured in by that, and then. That's true, because the, all the pinhead, pinhead and all the other Cenobites are pretty kinky looking. He might just, he might just get recruited by Pinhead. Pinhead might just be like, come join us. You got fishnets and weird fucking face. Yeah. Be a yeah. Cenobite. Yeah. You just have to put some pins in your head. I'm going to call that one a tie because I think he would just get recruited. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the team up. Love it. Yeah. Okay. They would, yeah, they would just become buds. We have such sights to show you. Um, Predator versus Drago. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Are we talking about Ivan Drago or Billy Drago? Uh, Drago from uh, Rocky Four. Oh, okay, Rocky Four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he must break him, and of course, like we've talked a lot about Rocky Four being the main ins- one of the main inspirations for this movie. Right. It's like Rocky's defeated everybody. He's defeated the whole Soviet Union into the Cold War. What else can he fight? How about an alien? An alien predator. <laughs> fucking lizard. Uh, let's see. Man, I mean, he did kill Carl Weathers. It's he pretty did. formidable. But, but I mean, Predator like he... really killed Carl Weathers. <laughs> yeah, you know, Drago's not that much different than Dutch in a sense. Yeah, hmm. we just don't know how inventive right. Drago is. We only saw him like hanging out in the ring and hooked up to machines. I think Drago just does what people tell him to. You know, I don't think he has a lot of inventiveness. He's just like, they're like, hit this machine. It's like, yeah. Hey. I, I think I give it to Predator. Yeah, I'm going Predator with. Predator wins. All right. Um, two more. Um, Johnny from Karate Kid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, from Cobra Kai. Yeah, Cobra Kai. Oh, my gosh. Did you watch season three yet? I just finished it. Not yet. I haven't started it yet. Oh, it is so good. So good. It's, yeah. All right. It's such a karate soap opera. I love it. Like the karate is so, so bad. I was like trying to pay attention this time around. I was like, oh, it is deliciously bad. It's like, especially when you have uh, poor Ralph Macho, who's like 60 years old, trying to pull off these moves. Oh, you no. Know, like, yeah. Like a spin kick. He has to kind of like, he basically like takes a knee and kind of like turns his body a little bit. <laughs> he hasn't gotten any better since Karate 3. <laughs> karate Kid no. 3. <laughs> Right. I mean, I think we missed all his prime athletic years between then and now. Even in Karate Kid 3, he was kind of like a little fat, a little <laughs> – like those jeans didn't quite fit him right. <laughs> Wax on. Wax on. <laughs> jeans on. Uh, can't take them off. Sorry, stuck. Oh, man. I, I think Predator wins versus Predator. Johnny. All right. Predator wins. Okay. Oh, last, never, guys. last one. Um okay. The Goblin King, David Bowie from Labyrinth. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're talking about another space time gender bender here. This guy is like, I don't know. He's, he's mysterious. He's magical. He's, he's kind of like a, like a kinky version of the predator, I think. Do but, you think he throws the predator into like an MC Mesher staircase room? <laughs> oh, I love this. And he throws like those glass balls at him. Yeah. The predator's like, <laughs> this sucks getting stuck on the stairs this staircase just leads to another staircase I know exactly oh man I ask for so little just let me ruin you uh it's hard yeah. I'd say the predator I'm 
Sorry, David Bowie. Like you have that bulge in your pants, but that's not stopping. Well enough. We've already established that uh, Predator's bulge is much larger. So Predator wins. Yeah, yeah. We've compared. We've screenshot this. All right, Don't so- worry, listeners. <laughs> We've done the research. Basically, we just compare their dick sizes, and then that's that determines the winner. So, predator wins. Predator wins. Predator wins. Yeah, make sure to Google that sometime. Google predator dick. <laughs> All right. Uh, so concludes my game that I've titled Predator Versus. All right. Thank you for the Predator Versus game. That was enjoyable. That was that was fun. That was a uh, maybe a nice way to uh, close things out here. So, I think so. I, yeah, I don't. I have nothing else to talk about uh, for Predator. Holy cow! Wow, Great. I think after 103 hours, we've covered everything. <laughs> I think we've done it. We've covered everything. I'm still discovering like little bits of content here and there about <laughs> Predator, but it's just it's 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 gone. It's too late. We're we're past doing new research, which is kind of a relief in a way. I haven't really, hasn't really struck me yet. Not probably not till I release the episode, whenever that will be. Um, but do you want to recommend anything? You know what? I've got a kind of a perfect recommend for us actually. Me too. Me too. Okay. So, um, my wife, my wife, my wife uh, for Christmas got me a, did I talk about this last episode? Got me a a 4k Blu-ray player. No. Oh yeah. So she got me a a four clay a four K Blu-ray player, um, and a handful of like four uh, K Blu-ray DVDs or oh. movies, right? Um, like movies that have been converted or whatever on uh, you know UHD ultra high definition. Mm. Um, and she got me like Mad Max Fury Road in four K, which was fucking amazing. And a handful of other things, but one of the gifts that she got me was the Predator four pack. Pre- the The movies are Predator, Predator Two, Predators, and the most recent The Predator. All four of them in 4K ultra high definition Blu-rays. Whoa! And uh, so far, I have watched the original Predator. I watched Predator 2 and I've watched Predators. And I have I'm I'm going to revisit The Predator just so I can finish out the the sequence. Um although I didn't like it very much the first time around, but I'm going to give it another shot. But uh holy shit, I that's what I'm going to recommend. Go find pre- the any of the Predator movies in 4K ultra high definition. Um watching these movies on in 4K was so much fun. Um, Predator obviously looked great, sounded great, was amazing. Um, but the real, the real fun for me was rewatching Predator 2 um, in 4K. That was just a blast. I love that movie anyway, and like to see it look that good was so much fun. And then Predators, which is a movie I've always enjoyed, I think doesn't get enough love. Man, I had such a good time watching that in 4K on the on the 70 inch screen, and um, I had not realized how much of an homage that movie is to the original. There's a whole bunch of lines they repeat from the original Predator. Um, mm. There's a the the concept is the same. It's a it's a cast of characters that are in the jungle trying to survive. So it's much more similar to the original movie, but it, if you've ever seen it, you know, it has a, a twist to it. So, um, that's my recommend. The 4k predator four pack was fucking fantastic. I enjoyed every second of it. So there's my recommend. Oh man. Awesome. I was literally just going to say, watch this movie watch predator uh, i plan on watching the whole thing front to back in the near future probably in the next week or so because i haven't watched the full thing all the way through but as soon as i start watching like minutes back to back to back for like research purposes um like i am so amazed all the time how quickly it moves it just moves so fast i, I like look down and it's like oh wow i've already made it you know, 20 minutes into the movie, and that's felt like five minutes. Like, it, it felt like nothing. We hit nothing. 
That was the same experience I had because since we have been doing this podcast, I have not really watched the movie from beginning to end. So to rewatch it and to rewatch it in 4K on my big screen and just sort of let the movie go from beginning to end um, was really, really fun. And even after talking about this movie for a hundred hours or whatever, um, I still appreciated it even a little bit more. So that shit holds up. Predator wins. It it holds up. It holds up from directing to music to acting. Uh, I've said it to technical things. I've said it before, even in this episode, that it's just so many things at the heights of their respective powers, of their respective games. Uh, and it just plays out like a perfect movie to me. Um, and I do feel that sense of loss when it ends. That, like It's not going to be... Uh, this good again for Predator or for, in my opinion, for Arnold because I this is by far my favorite Arnold movie, my favorite Arnold performance because mm-hmm. he's like a, a real person giving off uh, dramatic line readings, dramatic acting um, very few quips but like two quips yep. and yeah it's, it's, it's everything I want to see in a movie with like liking, I like the characters so much as soon as I like the characters I, I feel like a movie has to really try hard for me not to like it. And this is one where I like the characters. I like the simplicity of the plot. Um, and it's just a, a movie I can easily think about a lot and come up with all sorts of questions because it doesn't necessarily try to answer all the questions that might come up. There's, there's always more to find when you're watching either minute by minute or the whole thing in one go. Uh, and so I really look forward to following my own recommended watching the full movie. <laughs> Um, yeah, once this is last last episode is released. Wow, I love that we both recommended watching The Predator. <laughs> yeah, watch this movie. Yeah, yeah, this wasn't a cop out at all because I was definitely floating that in my brain, and obviously you were too. I was, I was. All right, well, have we done it, John? I think we did it. I think so. so speaking of watching a hundred hours of Predator, Jeff, where can people find you? <laughs> You can find me on the Twitter. I'll be there drinking whiskey just like I am right now. I am Carl underscore Hungus 314. That's Jeff Glover. Find me on the Twitter. My name is Carl. He's been expert. John, where can we find everything Predator Minute? Uh, you can also find us on the wonderful place that is Twitter at Predator Minute. You can, you can email the show at Predator Minute or Predator Minute at gmail.com. I'm laughing because it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with the emails now. But come to private minute at gmail. Not that uh, our inbox was flooded by any means, but there is, there is occasionally a, a notification there. Um, but you can also, gosh, where do I go? Oh, you can also join the discussion on Facebook at the Predator Minute Listeners Palapa. Target's the center of the 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 Palapa. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Hello, John here. I just wanted to give a quick last shout out to all of the current members of the Predator Minute listeners Palapa, targets the center of the Palapa. Uh, I looked and saw where I created the group February 22nd, 2019, almost two years ago. Uh, very exciting. So thanks to those uh, find folks for joining in on the discussions or just previewing discussions. If you just want to lurk, that's fine too. Uh, here are the names I have listed as the current members. Brad Mole, John Finn Parker, Timmy Bricks, Patricia Zabriskie, Bill Zabriskie, Christian Morales, Petri Eskelian, sorry, Petri Eskelinen, Sarah Lee Rainwater, Ian McLeod, Aaron Zabriskie, Tavares Cadfor, Tom Fahey, Blake Kibbe, Joseph Parker, Anna Anna Glover, Levi Polkinen, Brian O'Dell, Nick Martin, Chris Dillon, Nonis, Dillon, Tobias Capwell, Brian Campus, Patrick Zabriskie, Niall McGowan, Bill Stewart, Doug Barbeau, Eric Deutsch, Alan Batchelder, Zach Zabriskie, Myself, of course, John Zabriskie, and lastly, but not leastly, my wonderful co-host, Jeff Glover. Thank you again, Predator Minute listeners, Palapa members, 
and we will talk to you later. Target center of the plopa. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything for Predator Minute 104 to 107. And I've been John Zabriski. And I am Jeff Glover. Uh, and for the last time, until you listen to this the next time, <laughs> stick around. Stick around. Stick around. Stick around. I was trying to think back. Why do I say stick around like that? That was because <laughs> the episode my dad was on, his <laughs> audio cut out. <laughs> and like, I thought I lost his recording. And like, by the end, when we do our normal stick arounds, I was feeling a little bit bummed. And so I said it not in the normal Arnold, like stick around. It was stick around. Stick around. And so that's. <laughs> I'm Jeff Glover. Oh no! Just, is Bill alive? Oh no! Did he just dropped Bill? out. Oh my f! Uh, oh. Until next time, stick around. Oh no! <laughs> Who is your daddy, and what does he do? That's where that originated. I'll show you that. But in that episode again. <laughs> oh, good stuff, man. All right, I'm gonna end the recording here. You did it. Press cut for the final time. Three, two, one.